Hey guys, I'm Roger Wakefield, the Late AP V Expert Plumber, and in this video, we're going to talk about if you own a business and you've thought about joining the union, what are the benefits to you? And we're going to talk about that right now. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I've been plumbing over 38 years, and I have every master endorsement in the state of Texas. On this channel, I'm teaching you everything you need to know about plumbing. If you haven't been here before, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. Guys, as you can see, I got my guest with me again today, Mr. Richard Johnson from Southwest Pipe Trades. And I met Richard when I got into the union, and, and actually when, when I became an instructor down at the JATC, and, you know, one thing that when I was an instructor, Richard, I would always start out my, my first year apprentices, my class, and I normally had, you know, 40, 45, you know, those first year apprentice sure. classes are really big. And, and I'd always start out my class and say, okay, you know, who wants to be a good plumber? And, and you know, everybody raises their hand. Sure. And, and then I'd ask them, okay, who wants to be a foreman? And, and you know, some raise their hand, some, some don't. Okay, who wants to be a superintendent? And, you know, you, you, know, you get less. And, and then who wants to be like a project manager or, or you know, move into management? And, and even less raise their hand. But then when you get to the question that, that – and I'd always move up to, you know, vice president, director of operations, yada, yada, yada. But then my last question was always, as a plumbing class, who wants to own your own plumbing company one day? And, boy, a lot of hands would go up. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know of a couple of students that have gone through the program and got out and opened their own plumbing company. Uh, me, I, I'm a little bit different. I, I came in, I moved up, and then after I moved up to director of operations, I decided, okay, now I want to go do my own company. And it, it's, not, it's not as easy as it sounds. Right. Uh, that there's a lot to learn about owning a company. And, and unfortunately, college doesn't teach us. I mean, I mean you know, the, the apprentice hall doesn't teach us how, how to own a company. Right. Uh, they do teach foreman certification course, which which I think is really probably one of the best courses I've ever taken there. I, I took it in Ann Arbor sure. uh, and, and thoroughly loved it. And, and I know that we teach that to our, our apprentices now. Yeah, fifth-year apprentices uh -huh. get that. So my question to you is, if I've got a plumber out here or a plumbing company owner already, and they're like, look, I want to have a union plumbing company because I want what's best for my guys. Because I've told any of y'all that have watched any of my videos, you know, I'm a union service provider right here in Dallas, Texas, uh, residential plumbing. And I'm union because... My guy's insurance is paid for by me. They have a pension plan and a 401k that I put the money into, not them. It, it, it's part of their benefits package. Absolutely. Uh, so it's not money they get on the check, and that's not an option, but it's above and beyond. So so my guys make union scale, plus I pay their, their insurance, their pension, and their 401k. If, if, if anybody out here owned their own company and they were thinking about, you know what, I don't have enough guys that work for me. I need more people. I, I want better things for my guys. And, and they've thought about joining the union. What would you tell them? What, what are the benefits to a business owner, a company owner already, a guy wanting to open a company? What are the benefits about being a union plumbing company? Well, there, the, advantage, uh, the advantages of being a union company is is one of the main things is, is the insurance, okay? As you being a, 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 a company owner, or an owner of this of Texas Green Plumbing, you don't have to worry about shopping your insurance every year. If you're that, all these owners, I, I, I worked for three different companies in my lifetime, and, for, and they were all small family-owned businesses that, that actually would, would man up from, from like five to six guys to 25 men, and then man down depending on, on their uh, uh, jobs that they had. They never had to worry about insurance coverage for their for their family. That they that was already set in stone. We we've got that covered, and it's a good policy. Um, it's a Blue Cross Blue Shield BPO, and uh, it's got a modest deductible, like fifty dollar deductible, and a thousand dollar out of pocket uh, or deductible for the employee, and then max out of pocket for calendar year is fifty six hundred dollars. Well, as a company owner, you can actually 
pay in for on 175 hours, man hours, of, of that premium uh, for your employees. That'd be your office staff as well. So you could cover them as, as well. I Some of our companies, they don't cover that completely 100%, but they, but they offset that like three-fourths three of it, in the, and it makes it easier for their, their employee because not only do you need labor, for to do the work that you have to, uh, that you're looking at in front of you, but you need quality staff to actually do the accounting side, answer the telephone, and do the or office orchestration. Every just bit like of it. Every bit of it. And and if they're not, if, if there's a if if there is a shortfall on that side, and that, with that employee, and say they have children or what have you, uh, and their premium is too high, or they don't have any coverage at all, they're going to find a job or a company that they're going to get those 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 coverages, so that it'll offset uh, their um, money out go, you know, for their monthly budget. So that's that's one of the, uh, the major things is just the insurance alone. And, and I've got to say, uh, I mean, you know. My my wife runs the back office. Julie does, uh, and thank God she does. Because with mm -hmm. my my business mind, I mean, I'm a plumber. Right. I, I've I've never learned the business end of it, and, and she's really good at it. And I have had to learn more about the business end, which is where we're growing. But you know, we, you know, we, we still check around. Look, what would sure. it cost me to insure somewhere else if I needed to? Right. And. We've actually got a pretty good insurance plan at a pretty reasonable cost. Right. See, and too, the, you know, being that you're 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 a member, and with that, you're paying in on yourself, and so he, all of his legal dependents are covered. His wife, and if he still had children at home, they'd be covered too. Thank some God. The, I, thank some, God, I don't. And so you think about that as a business owner, and you got children at home, and maybe your wife has a, an income, and. Maybe you're having to offset that on her insurance plan or what. Well, it, this would be even a secondary uh, to that uh, with the coverage, you know, for, for you and your and your wife. So it, it was very easy for me to get in the union as a union contractor because I was already a union member. Say, say that, you know, you are watching right now. How, how does he say, you know what, I, I want – my company to be a union company, or I want to talk to somebody about that. How, how would they go about that? Okay, they could contact my, myself, you know, by my cell phone. We could set up a meeting, and uh, basically we'll have a, we'll have a conversation. What do you do? You know, what what are what are all the ins and outs? Like you're a residential uh, contractor, but if you're a, a residential and a commercial contractor, and it's all you do is service, we have contracts that, that actually are a collective bargaining agreement that is tailored for you. If you're a new construction contractor and you're going to load up your jobs, you need to load them up and man them down as as need be because of the the work. We you need to be on on the the uh, union ag agreement here that's local to the to Dallas because you're going those are the guys that are going to be temporary workers and you're going to um, put out a job call and say hey I need I need two journeyman plumbers. I need a, a couple of apprentices. You give them what level of apprentice they are so that you manage your crew rate so that it fits the job that you have. Okay. Uh, no, and, and I think that's great. And, and it, you know, when I got into the union, I never realized about jobs manning up and manning down. Right. And, and, you know, I've been on jobs that, you know, all of a sudden we put out a call and it's like, we need 100 plumbers. And mm -hmm. I, I know. Oh, it's, it's hard to feel like calling them out. There you go. We're, we're, we're out there looking then. <laughs> uh, you, you bet. And, 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 I mean, you know, I'm looking for residential service plumbers, and you and yep. I have been on the phone a lot here lately uh, about, hey, look, Roger, I've got a guy. And, you know, th th there are a lot of people that, that are wanting to, to get into the union. Uh, so, so, so the benefits to the owner – well, you know, from my point of view is, is look, I, I don't really have to shop around for insurance. I, I do check prices, but we've got a very good insurance plan, and, and it's not very expensive. That's right. So what what other benefits are there to an owner? To an owner, then the other one is, is you're going to pay a pension in on, on your employee. Or and you want, if you want to uh, pay a pension, you know, pay monies for your own pension through the, the Plumbers and Pipe Fitters uh, United uh, Association Pension Fund, you can do that too. And then, um, and you can create that wealth, you know, that you could pass on to your wife because I'm otherwise 
as a business owner, you're having to either rat hole some money and you're having to try to stuff it in holes, you know, and then how is it going to grow? And a, and a pension doesn't run out. I, I've been in this trade for, for 30, almost 39 years. And I've worked for three, three contractors in my whole career. And uh, with that, I'm, I could retire, I could retire two years ago and my pension would be $3,120 a month till the day I die. And if, if I pass on, my wife's going to get 100% survivorship of that pension of almost $700, almost $800 a month. And if both of us meet a catastrophic death before I collect any of it, well, my children are in there in their late 30s or are, are beneficiaries of that pension and they'll get a lump sum check for the monies that was paid in on, on my behalf for my pension. Wow. That, so see, that's, that's a career. That's, that's a deal changer. You know, it's your money. You worked for it. You, it was paid in on your behalf. So it's your money. And yeah, you know, it's funny because I, I had somebody call me j- just yesterday. Uh, apparently we, we had an apprentice just die here recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what kind, what kind of benefits do we have in, in let, let's, let's say, say burial. Uh, if, if I'm a journeyman, uh, my, my, I'm up to date on my dues, everything's current and all that, and I'm a good standing member, or, or even apprentices, what kind of benefits do they have compared to the journeyman? Because I, I don't okay. know about it. Okay. Well, the, on the apprentice side uh, of that, as a business owner, or you're going to pay in a full um, um, assessment, if you want to call it that, or for, full benefit um, for their insurance, which is like five dollars and sixty seven cents an hour. Then you modestly pay into a four hundred one k, and I mean it's just like ten or it's like thirteen or fourteen cents, and then uh, sixteen cents into the into the uh, uh, national pension. It takes those guys five years to, to vest that pension with a, a minimum of fifteen hundred hours per year working in that year. So with that. As a member, the once those those because we don't know if those guys are going to make it. These guys think they want to do what our trade is, but at some point, you know, they're going to have a, a wholehearted commitment, and they're going to they're going to tote the note, and they're going to they're going to work through it. Or those guys, some of those are going to go away. We we have some um, residual losses, you know, out of each class because uh, yeah, they, 40, 45, I didn't realize this was construction. 40, 45 <laughs> first year plumbers yeah there's not 45 at graduation no there's maybe about 22 or 23 and it's due to, to a variety of things you know life is messy maybe they couldn't meet the the the, the two nights per week of school because they had to manage their children and you got to do what you got to do because that's your children and so they just couldn't complete the course they popped out due to absenteeism and not uh meeting the standard that's set forth by the department of labor but but with that uh the, the the monies that they're paying in, they're they're going to vest in that five years. So at some point, as a business owner, you're going to be paying their full fringe. That right there is an attractive uh, attractive to a lot of workers because they're looking for what they have on their check every for a bottom line because out of it they're taking two to five dollars an hour for insurance for them and their three or four kids before they come to work for a union yeah before they come to work for their uh, a union contractor they're having to pay they're they're having to take money and match you know funds for a 401k at, at their present employer and and that's just a drawdown on their actual operating costs for their family. I mean, it's, you know, when you, I, I ran into one guy that was paying $1,800 a month just in his insurance premium for he and his wife and his four children. And I, and he said, I work a half a month before I ever put any money in the household. And so to give them that bonus to put in their front pocket, to, to, it changes their standard of living, and let me tell you something: they'll be more than appreciated to stay and in, in, in work for you and, and loyal to you, you know, as a as a uh, worker. Well, and you think about it: you get a, a young man just starting out, say say a second year, that that's at a, an open shop company, and he's having to pay for insurance for for a family of four. And he's trying to put money in a four hundred one k or a retirement or something like that. He's going to be deducting more from his check than he's taking home. Right. So those are the dues he's paying, he, and, and and so you can pay those for him <laughs> and to help him out because at the bottom, what you want to do is a contract or want with the position you want to be in is you want to have the most trained person that you can put in front of your customer or, or either access to that if that person's trainable. Right. And we, in, in the apprentice process, 
along with you because you're you take those guys in and they're working with you and if after you show him this repetitive task three or four times if he just can't get it maybe he needs to go to work for wendy's or somewhere you else bet. it might not be true he may mcdonald's is hiring every day every day i mean so it, it, we, you what we do is repetitive tasks it doesn't matter if it's air conditioning refrigeration or if it's plumbing or if it's welding you're doing over and over the same things to accomplish the same end so, guys, if you're open shop, do me a favor. Just leave down in the comments below if you do have a family. How many people are in your family and how much are you paying weekly for insurance if you're an open shop, you know, plumber, electrician, roofer, tradesman, whatever it is you are. Uh, Richard, if, if, if a, a business owner watching this wants to get into the union or if we've got a, a plumber, pipe fitter, welder, whatnot, HVAC technician, that, that wants to get into the union, the United Association, uh, if they want to get in touch, get in it here local, how do they get in touch with you? Or if they're, you know, from across the United States and they want to get in, how do they get in touch um, with you? Just uh, call me on my cell phone. It's My cell phone number is 469-520-1261. Or you can email me and in uh, at SWPTOR10 at UANET dot org and i will return your call and i will uh leave me a telephone number if you email me and i will i will reach out to you and we'll discuss your opportunities you know here or, or in other states wherever you may be and guys this has been good for me uh you know i got into the union in 97 and I, i've been in it since then so uh, apparently there's something beneficial about it and, and and that's from me as a journeyman plumber getting in to, to me as a business owner now so, you know, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And you can get in touch with me. If we're not connected on LinkedIn, uh, find me on LinkedIn, Roger Wakefield. Connect with me. And over there, I mainly teach business owners how to do business better. But connect with me over there because I teach business owners how to do business better and do different things on LinkedIn. I coach people on social media. I coach people on networking, video, and we're even getting into SEO because we've got tired of getting ripped off by so many people. So if you've got questions about that and we can help you, just please reach out and let me know. My name is Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber, and I'll see you on the next video if you don't get flushed.